Today on Steve Rob Reviews, I'm going to show you this whole setup that I've got mocked up already. I've got it all ready to go, so uh, next summer I can install all this. I'm going to show you what's behind it. I'm going to show you exactly how it all operates. And I got a pump now. I've just kind of mocked out so far the box. I'm going to finish the box at a later date, but I'm going to show you everything, how this is supposed to go together. And I'm going to transport this in my truck. And uh, hopefully, I would say in August, you're going to see this thing working. So let's take a look and let's see how it's all put together. Well, let's start off at the back end here. And you can see I got my wiring harness here. And uh, it comes up to my control panel. I showed how the control panel all went together before. And uh, if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link down below for that video. And you can see you got the battery on the right middle is for the solar panel and got the switch for the pump. So how did this all go together? Well, you can see I just put a couple of aluminum strips there and I've got some half decent beefy uh, fasteners and all I did was attach the solar panel with a couple of pieces of aluminum angle and you could see there where I'm just using these fasteners to go in right there and uh, that should be no problem down below there you can see I've got the battery box in there and that's where the battery box will go and if you take a look here you can see how this was designed and it's just meant to go on a 45 and if we take a look in here yeah you can see where I can put them two fasteners right in there easy no problem so I made it so that it was on a 45 degree angle and for me I find 45 degrees is just about right for what I'm going to need and it's very easy you know you just mock up this hair no problem and we'll go around the other side here and you can see how the angles are and if we take a look at here you can see where I've got a fastener here and a fastener here now that's a carriage bolt to go through because when I built this, the top that I could go here, the highest I can go in the back of my truck is this level here. So this one here will detach and just pull right up. And when I get up there, I can just put the two carriage bolts in on each side. And uh, it's that easy. And there's the little junction box for all the wiring. So I'm going to zip tie everything nice when I get up there. And my pump and everything is going to go right on this platform here and I'm also going to fasten the platform down so it doesn't move at all and I've got a couple of spots in the front there a little bit of an excess on the stud now this is all made out of 2x4 spruce except a couple of pieces I had which were uh, pressure treated like this one here and the two rails on the bottom besides that I just stained it all so that's it right there and let's take a look at the pump and let's see what I've got going on there. Okay so there's the pump set up and the inlet here I've got a strainer on and I've got this is just like a big wing nut so I can take this off and if you notice I've got a hole right here and I'll get the hose when this is all finished I'll get the hose and bring it through to the outside. And here's the pump here. This is a 60 PSI pump. Now I did phone SureFlow and get their recommendations on what I was doing. And this is the pump right here and the pump number, that 8000 number, 543236. And this is not an intermittent duty pump. It's a continuous duty pump. And the most I'm going to get out of this is probably about one gallon a minute. And of course I get this all plumbed in like this. Very simple to do. And I put a gauge on it. And you can see where I've got the hose going out the end there. So all i got is my just my connections here. So what I'm going to do is, when I finish the box, I'm going to bring a hole through this side and attach these two on. And then I'll have 
by a receptacle plug. And I'm going to show you how that all goes together. I got a special jig that mounts on the outside here for the re, uh, receptacle to make it waterproof. And just want to show you here this particular hose I get. Now, see how it's thin wall? I have tried the thick wall hose like this in the past, and I don't like it. I don't like it at all because it's way too thick. And these hose clamps, using these type of clamps, well, I was getting leaks, especially when it got colder. So I decided to go with the thin wall, and that should be fine. But that's the setup right there. Very simple. So, you know, when this is wired in, all I'm going to do is have a hole through this particular side of the box. And that extension cord will just be hanging out and it'll attach to my lead that goes over to the uh, electrical station with a switch that will turn off and on. And if you're wondering what this Allen key is, well, I'll just show you on these pumps. If you look right in the end there, yeah, that's how you jump, uh, adjust the uh, pump pressure. And I've got a uh, foot valve right here with a little bit of a strainer on. And I've got two more of these fittings. And these fittings will go on the outside over here. And I'll just show you where. So the hose would come out and this will go on here. Now what attaches on here is all PEX plumbing. So I'm going with PEX for all the rest. And I have about 100, 150 feet to uh, move water. And that's it right there. Now the only thing that I've done that maybe I can't show you, I'm not too sure if I have enough light, but if you just take a look right in there, you can just, yeah, they're right there. You see that right there? So that's a piece of metal flashing, <laughs> aluminum flashing. And on the bottom here, yeah. There it is right there. And the whole idea behind that is make sure no mice can get in there, right? So that's two layers of screening. Plus, what do you do if you get a leak? Yeah, so what do you do if you get a leak in here? You just fill your box up and you'd wreck everything, right? So you gotta have a drain. So I, where's the logical place? Put it right underneath the pump, right? So that's it right there. Well, there's a couple of things I'd like to just uh, mention before I wrap this up is I made sure that I put a pressure pump on here gauge because if you take a look at all these sure flow, sure flow pumps as the PSI climbs so does the amperage draw so the max amperage draw on this for 60 PSI is going to be around 8 amps so at 30 it's around 3 amps so that's why I want to take a look and see exactly how much pressure this is building up as I go with my over a hundred feet that I have to travel and it's uphill. If you've never seen my cabin before and around my camp, well, I've got like a 45 degree angle and I'm going to have to go. So I'm going to mount this panel right in front of where I'm going to dig my well. And uh, I'm going to pump this water that far. Now I made sure you can get all these other type of pumps that are intermittent duty. I didn't want that. And of course, when I build this box, I'm going to take the lid off while it's working, right? You don't want to have too much heat in there as well. But if you buy a continuous duty pump, there's a huge difference between the two. This here will only run maybe, I'm saying the most I'm going to need is maybe an hour, an hour and maybe 20 minutes tops to do all the watering that I need to fill all my barrels. But if you take a look at their flow charts, the intermittent duty ones, when I phone SureFlow, they said like 45 minutes max because then the pump will start overheating. So I made sure I got a continuous duty one and the continuous duty ones was actually pumping a lot less water. And you know what? I don't know how much flow I'm going to get out of my well. I haven't drilled the well yet, but hopefully you're going to see it. And one gallon. I would be happy with one gallon. The most this thing will pump, I believe, is 1.8 gallons per minute. I'd be happy with one gallon because what is the draw inside the well? I don't want to run this dry. Now, these pumps can run dry without damaging them, but you just can't run them forever dry, right? So this is the setup right here. I hope you like it. It's, uh, it's very basic and it's very easy to do. 
if you just take your time, you think it all out, and with the platform here, this is a 100 watt solar panel. I had the panel already, and I think it's gonna work out fine, so I had to make it so it's like a plug and play. I put everything in the back of my truck, I take it out, I can mount it, and it all just goes in real easy. And I'm gonna show all this in action when I actually have it all ready to go after I drill the well. And the drill, drilling the well part is gonna be the hardest part. So thanks for joining me here today. If you haven't seen this channel before, you're welcome to subscribe and watch in the future how this summer, hopefully this project works out like I've planned and I'll have my own source of easy running water where all I have to do is go down to this control panel here, flip the switch, and I've got water. Okay, you guys, uh, hopefully stay tuned for this next summer. Come back again and let's have some more fun. Cheers.